in terms of safety, obviously one of the things that you need to consider, if you're out in the sea in a small boat, something goes wrong, how do you get assistance to help you overcome your difficulties? And there are two primary things which people tend to take. One is a mobile telephone. We're all used to them nowadays. Um, yes, they do work at sea. Um, I have to say, sometimes they may not. And if you take the scenario where you're out canoeing and you're very close into some cliffs, you may not get a signal on your mobile telephone, in which case the mobile telephone is of no use whatsoever. If you are going to take a mobile telephone with you, obviously you're afloat on the water, you need to put one of these into a waterproof container so that it's there when you actually want to use them. As Coast Guards, we don't like mobile telephone calls. There are a couple of main reasons why. One, of course, I've just explained, if you're close into cliffs and somewhere, you may not get a signal, in which case it is useless. The main problem with the mobile telephone, as far as we're concerned, it's a one-to-one -one means of communicating. Yes, you can talk to us. Yes, we can talk to you. But in terms of sending assistance out to you, what is essential is that we communicate with you, you communicate with us, we communicate with the lifeboat if that's what we've sent, the lifeboat communicates with you. With VHF radio, everybody hears what is going on. There's a complete communications loop if you want. You can hear what we're saying, we can hear what you're saying, as indeed can the lifeboat or the helicopter. A mobile telephone doesn't allow that, and that's the main drawback from a Coast Guard point of view for mobile telephones. What we of course prefer is that you carry a handheld VHF radio. Again if you're going on the water it needs to be in a waterproof container. Uh, even a small handheld radio with a short aerial it's got probably an effective mile of a uh, range rather of up to about 10 miles bear in mind the height of our aerials and so on it'll probably be even further than that. One of the positive points of, of the VHF radio is that when you transmit a signal here at Hollyhead or at any Coast Guard station around the coast of the UK, we can get a bearing of your transmission uh, from the aerial sites that we have. If we have a bearing from two aerial sites, of course, then we can fix your position very simply by using the DF bearing uh, uh, where the bearings cross is where you're going to be. So it's another advantage of VHF. VHF radio, very effective. Again, you're probably aware with VHF radio, VHF channel 16 is dedicated as being the distress, urgency, and safety frequency. Here in the operations room at Hollyhead, one of us will be listening to channel 16 24 hours a day. We used to maintain a headphone watch on channel 16. That is no longer a requirement, though we do maintain a loudspeaker watch on channel 16. And in fact, most operators here in the ops room, if they're listening to channel 16, will still maintain the headset watch. If you have a problem at sea, you need to contact us. VHF radio is going to be the most effective means of doing it. Even if you're out of range of us, by transmitting a distress message on VHF radio, other vessels within the area who receive your message will then relay it on to us. In other words, your chance of being heard are greatly increased by using VHF radio. With a distress message, we prefix it with Mayday. Uh, that indicates you are in dire and imminent peril and that you require immediate assistance. As soon as we hear the spoken word Mayday, it obviously goes right to the list, the top of the list of our priorities. And over Channel 16, we hear your Mayday call, Mayday, 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 this is Kayak 1, Kayak 1, Kayak 1, my position, and give your position as a latitude and longitude if you can, or failing that as a rough bearing and distance from a known uh, position on land, a, a lighthouse or something like that. We need to know where you are, we need to know how many people there are, and we need to know the sort of assistance that you require. 
when we receive that message, we will respond immediately on channel 16. We'll let you know we've received your message. We will reply back, Mayday, Kayak 1, Kayak 1, Kayak 1. This is Hollyhead Coast Guard. Received your Mayday. Stand by. As soon as that happens, of course, everybody here in the Ops Room is now getting on to perhaps tasking a lifeboat or a helicopter, whichever is the most effective means of helping you, whilst, of course, the Channel 16 operator will still be talking to you. They will then want to get further information from you. It's essential we know who you are, where you are, the assistance you require. Once we have that information, we can then begin a search and rescue operation. If we don't have details of your craft, of course, the further questions we want to know is what does your craft look like, what's the colour of it, uh, do you carry flares, if you carry flares, when a lifeboat gets closer to you, we'll ask you then to send off a flare to help the lifeboat locate you. But mobile telephone, VHF radio, from a Coast Guard point of view, VHF radio every time.